Chase Tyler here at Kalahari High School event, checking with 7316R Rigatoni. As we're filming, it's currently ranked number two right near the end of the day. So we can't wait to see how they continue to do throughout the playoff match as well, too. Be diving a lot in the Rigatoni. They have one of the coolest intakes. I've seen a lot of control with this robot that we'll be talking about. So of course, we're talking about some other things, including their drivetrain config, puncher area. We're talking about their double wings and some of their strategy behind it. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Uh, Andrea, as we're recording this, your team is uh, top 100 true skill uh, overall in the world, so congratulations on that. And I think that always starts out with a robust drivetrain. So let's start kind of bottom up, show us your drivetrain off and the config and talk more about it. Yeah, of course. So for our team, it's always been really important that we travel really fast because it helps us play like a variety of different strategies, such as bowling or defending, which a fast drivetrain is crucial for that. For our drivetrain, we like to have six motors because that just helps us move really fast with a 450 RPM. And... The wheels as well, we use four small wheels, which allows us to go over the bar in the middle, which is also very crucial to our gameplay, as it allows us to play from both sides of the field very efficiently, which we also have these sleds on the front, which help us get like advantage over the middle bar and help us cross very quickly. Looking at uh, throughout the entire duration again, has your drivetrain pretty much stayed the same or have you made any major changes? No, our drivetrain is, uh, this is actually our third iteration of the drivetrain. We've changed it quite a bit. One of our biggest changes was we used to have a flex wheel as our third wheel here because that helped us with traction when we were being pushed around at the match load bar. But we decided to get rid of it in favor for speed because we just found it was a lot more beneficial if you could just move fast instead of being not pushed around. Daniel, so we go into your uh, your puncher and your beer tier hang. Uh, one of the things as we see this game continually evolve, the meta has really changed from you know doing match loads right away to just these short little bursts of match loads, right? And I think your team has adapted that quite well. So talk to me more about your puncher mechanism uh, and your beer tier uh, climb and hang, what you're doing for that. Yes, we actually started the season out with a catapult rather than a punching mechanism, but we found it wasn't quite as consistent as we wanted. So we switched to this design fairly early on, but the biggest change is that we used to have a four bar to essentially just shoot all the tri balls off at the beginning of the match. But we found the, as the strategy evolved over the season that that really just wasn't the main gameplay anymore. And then with the additional uh, many, many high blockers, we found the four bar wasn't actually being used that frequently either. So we decided to change to this much lighter design, which has the puncher just directly mounted. But the downside to that was that our four bar actually was our hanging mechanism with a PTO connected to it. So we had to switch to this uh, four piston PTO, not PTO, I'm a four piston um, hang mech, which essentially uses this hook that slides over the bar really easily and then pulls us down. It consistently gets about like exactly B tier because we have about a perfect balance of weight on the robot. And one other thing that we did with our puncher, because we can no longer lift up the puncher on a four bar, if we were ever to match load, like match load into our punching mechanism for a long time, we often use these uh, flexible standoffs that can allow us to put a tri ball in at several angles, which actually gives us the ability to sit inside the match load zone and fire at an angle, which gives us a much higher arc if we so choose to. Do you do that uh, like for skills or anything like that? Not at the moment, but it is still a possibility for matches if we need to shoot over teams. Henry, let's talk about a little bit more on your uh, match strategy. I see you're going to the double wing uh, config on your robot here. Yeah. So talk to me about that and uh, how you're using the uh, double wings in the match as well. Yeah, so they're, um, I mean, they're both wings, but we use them for very different things in the match. So um, these obviously have this plexiglass here and they kind of act as a wedge or like a ramp. So if there's ever big groups of tribals, which there often are uh, with teams that shoot more or want to bowl more, 
uh, we can push really all of them over at a time. So we don't even have to worry about match loading ourselves. We can just score everything that they've already put on the field. Um, and then for our back wings, we really uh, use them more for Auton. Those don't have the plexiglass, so we can go over the uh, match load bar to get the tribal out for win points. Um, and then they also, since they come down and not out, they lock. So there's no way that uh, they will have any give just because of like how they are. Um, and so we can use those for pushing big groups of tri balls into the net since they're never going to get pushed back. Um, yeah. We mentioned uh, earlier you're currently ranked number two as a recording on this. Uh, coming into this event, has your strategy changed at all from what you thought coming in would be versus what it, the actual gameplay has been? Yeah, so in some of the scrims that we've done with our teams or teams that are close to us, we uh, have focused a lot more on just bowling and putting them directly into the intake uh, and just taking them over one at a time. When we like, got here, we realized sometimes we'll have like a bigger like open field, there's no one covering us, so we want to do two or four at a time and just try to score as much as we can while there's no one close to us. At least a couple more things to check out on this row. We mentioned earlier, uh, you have a really cool intake. I love how your wheels are uh, set up here. Uh, kind of interesting with the cut wheels here, so I'd love to hear more of the thought process behind that. And we're going to talk about a couple other things you do in, uh, in Autonomous as well, too. Yeah, um, so our intake has changed the most on our robot. We've really had trouble perfecting it, but I think we finally have. We utilize these cut four-inch flex wheels to minimize the weight distribution and um, that also helps with our hang so that we're not falling down to an A tier while we're hanging. And then we use these mini flex wheels in the middle so that it all kind of surrounds the tri ball. And then with that, we utilize a ramp on the bottom that kind of fully holds the tri ball in place. And that has really helped, um, especially when we're being defended, to keep the tri ball in place and not slip out. And then we utilize these zip ties on the top of our intake for to get the autonomous win point. In the win point, you have to be contacting your match load bar, and we found that these easily contact the horizontal bar, and that's helped us today since we got the autonomous win point in all of our matches so far. Awesome. Well, congratulations on a uh, great uh, progress here so far. Then we can't wait to see how you do here at uh, Kalahari as well, too. Uh, but can we see how you do it throughout the rest of the season? How your uh, robot continues to evolve? I think one of the key things uh, teams to pay attention to is not just what they're doing, but that thought process that goes in behind it is so important as well. So good luck here at Kalahari and the rest of the way. Thanks for taking time. Tell us more about your team. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.